guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Priya and I keep it real on this channel. So if you haven't already, do click that subscribe button. I make a lot of variety of videos from traveling from to faith, to getting into medical school, uh, about being a doctor, a little bit of every th aspect of my life really. So if you're interested in those kind of things, do click the subscribe button guys and show your girl some love. So before you guys ask, this is not a scrub top, okay? I bought this dress from Debenhams and still haven't had a chance to wear it anywhere else. So I'm just going to rock it on this YouTube video. So as you could tell from the title, today's video is going to be about online resources that I've used during my medical school. I have made a video previously about revision techniques and in that video, if you've already watched it, I have mentioned uh, quite a lot of uh, resources that I've used during my medical school. So if you guys want to know a more detailed and thorough a video about how exactly I studied and all the resources that I used, do watch that video. Yes, it's a little bit long, I'm sorry, but it does have everything that I used and I will be sharing all my tips with you guys on that video. So if you haven't already, do click down. I've, I've attached a link down below as well. But this video is gonna be a super quick video about all the resources that I used for anyone who's interested. So as a first year medical student, you might be a little bit confused about where to get your information, what resources to use. And this is the video for you guys. I'm just gonna be going through a couple of uh, resources, online resources that I used, which I thought were absolutely brilliant, okay? Um, this uh, video is not sponsored. So if the people I mention on this video uh, would like to sponsor me, uh, feel free. Firstly, I would like to tell you guys about Armando Hussurigan. He does a lot of videos on a lot of medical conditions. He makes it super easy. He makes it engaging. Um, so he teaches you through drawings. And what I love most about his videos is it's very concise and it's very pictorial. Like he shows you exactly what he's talking about and he kind of puts it, he places it on the page, which makes it very easy to kind of remember. And I'm a visual learner and I remember where things were on the page and just watching his video is really helpful for me. Another major thing is that at the end of his videos, he always um, puts a PDF of uh, his um, video which is just a lifesaver because once you've learned from his video it'll be it's very useful rather than you sitting there and drawing it out and making your own notes if you want to save that time you can always just either go onto his website or just click on his pdf and you have everything that he drew um, on a piece of paper so you can just annotate more stuff onto it it's a great revision resource so if you haven't already do check him out i absolutely love him he's probably one of the uh, first videos that I watched during medical school and I found it absolutely useful and if you guys follow me on my Instagram you guys know I still use it and um, sometimes when I want to revise a couple of uh, topics after work I would still use his videos they are quite simple um, and very easy to understand and yeah do check it out guys so the second YouTube channel that I'd like to talk about is Osmosis. Osmosis has just blown out of proportion over the last couple of years because it is amazing. Uh, I used this especially from in second, first and second year, um, more second year when you were learning about pathophysiology and you want to know about the symptoms. And um, it's not, I don't use it to learn management as such. It's more to do with learning what the disease is, how does it present, how do you investigate it. This is your perfect, the perfect set of videos for you guys to watch. Uh, again, just like uh, the previous suggestion, he also does animated videos on um, certain conditions. He, it's very easy to follow. He explains things, he or she, it's not always a he. I don't know why I keep saying he. So Osmosis also explain things really well. Um, they lay everything out really well. Um, they do very simple pictures and uh, text, which I absolutely love. Um, so if you haven't already, do check out Osmosis, guys. I think it's very valuable, especially in second year when you're trying to learn pathophysiology or you quickly want to know oh, what's Parkinson's about and you just want to uh, just get an overall summary, overall overview. That's the channel to go to. Third resource that I want to talk to you guys about is Dr. Najib's lectures. I mentioned Dr. Najib's lecture in my previous video as well, and he should really come number one, but I am going to put him on number three because 
um, because his content is quite long. And I think that's one of the things that put people off a lot because um, his lectures can be a couple of hours long. Uh, so if you're someone who just wants a quick overview of a topic, um, Dr. Najib is probably not the person that you would want to go to. But for me, I'd like to um, learn things quite thoroughly. So yes, quick summaries are great, but uh, when it comes to more difficult topics, when it's quite hard to understand, Dr. Najib breaks it down so well. He teaches you, he just teaches you so well, okay? He literally was my medical school tutor, really. Uh, for example, if you are to learn about leukemias, that's quite a um, quite an advanced topic, I think. it's There's a lot of things to understand. Um, you can't really memorize a lot of it. You kind of need to understand how it happens and um, why you get the symptoms you get and things like that. And I feel like, yes, um, Dr. Najib, do, does that video over about six hours, I think. Yes, it might seem long, but I feel like that was a worthwhile six hours for me. Um, he just explains it so well, and especially embryology. Um, when I was in first year, I just found embryology to be so difficult. It was really hard to get my head around it. And when I initially heard about Dr. Najib's videos, the first set of videos I watched were embryology. And I remember watching it thinking, oh, it's just so long. Does this guy just not stop talking? And he repeats things over and over again. But guys, you will be surprised how well he teaches you. Like I still, still remember quite a lot of things from, um, watching his lectures alone for embryology. Um, you can uh, buy his subscription. I think it's a set price for unlimited use, like a lifetime use, which is amazing. So it's a good investment for you guys to make. Uh, but he does also have a YouTube channel with a lot of videos, but I think there are some videos missing, which he has the whole thing on his actual account. So do check it out, guys. It's not a waste of time. If you want to learn things quite thoroughly, if you're finding certain topics quite difficult, then definitely check out Dr. Najib's lectures. Another a resource that I used was Anatomy Zone. Um, so anatomy in our university, we learned it in first year. So first year was heavy on anatomy. Um, anatomy is quite a large topic, so you can't really just learn from videos. Yes, you do need to. I think anatomy was one thing where I used a lot of books as well, like Grace Anatomy. Um, I also used Netters. Um, I also use Netters flashcards for them. But an, one website or online resource that I found really helpful was definitely um, Anatomy Zone. The software they use is quite useful. It helps you to visualize. It helps you to see where the insertion is, where uh, where it attaches onto, and um, the the positioning of the muscles. You name it. It's an absolutely amazing uh, online resource. They have a YouTube uh, channel again, and it's an absolutely amazing amazing resource. So do check it out to learn anatomy. Um, that is one of my top anatomy resource. Something I used um, alongside Osmosis was Khan Academy. Khan Academy is also very similar to Osmosis. Um, it's an YouTube uh, channel which kind of goes through conditions. Again, it's really useful for when you're in second and third years, when you're learning about conditions, you want to know um, the pathophysiology, you want to know the symptoms, how to investigate it, etc. Um, it, again, it's an amazing resource. I love the way it's set out. Um, unlike in Osmosis, where the screen is quite white and they draw on like quite a white screen, um, Khan Academy, it's more, it's on a black screen. So it's really about what you like. I personally prefer Osmosis to Khan Academy, but I definitely use Khan Academy and Osmosis about the same amount. Um, and I found both of them to be very useful. So do check out Khan Academy. Another resource that I do remember using uh, during medical school, but I don't remember using it much, was um, handwritten tutorials. I don't know how popular they are uh, these days, but I definitely remember using it during my uh, first and second year. Um, the only thing is I wasn't a fan of how it was laid out. Everything was very black and white. And I, like I said, I'm quite a visual learner. I like things to have color in it. So yeah, it doesn't really have color in it. It's quite 
boring. However, it was still very useful. I mean, the, the content was quite good. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not a fan of the layout, but the content was quite good. Um, especially I remember using it for neurology. Um, so neurology anatomy, I think I remember using it for, but do check it out. See if you guys like that. If you're not a great big fan of having colors dotted around everywhere and you quite, quite like it, um, quite black and white, then handwritten tutorials is for you guys. And the one online resource that I've used, um, in the last few years of my medical it's school past medicine past medicine is something that i used from fourth year onwards fourth and fifth year i used past medicine it's very good when you're preparing for your finals yes they do have something for, for one to um three years but I never really used that, but definitely the past medicines finals edition, I used that quite a lot and it's very, very good. It kind of gives you a, a whole bank of questions for you guys to practice with. It also kind of shows you where you are alongside your peers. Um, and it also has a textbook with in it, which I found really amazing. And I did use it to make my notes as well. Um, and if you're someone out there who doesn't want to make notes, they just want to get on with, you know, just reading information, answering questions, past medicine is definitely for you guys. And even those of you who are not a fan of like online resource and would prefer books, etc. Past medicine, are very, past medicine is a very good resource for you guys to test yourself. Um, I've what I found out was um, getting closer to my finals. I did do, use past medicine quite a bit and it really helped because it gets you into the zone of, you know, being on your exam mode. Um, it helps you with your timing uh, because let's be real, if everyone was given about three hours to do uh, an exam paper, we all will probably do very, very well. But time pressure is a really, really big thing when it comes to exams. And I struggle with that because I can't remember um, finding adequate amount of time to complete the last 20 questions. I was always rushed for time. So um, practicing uh, timed, uh, you know, answering questions really helps. So um, yes. So do check out past medicine. It is a good investment. Yes, it is. Again, they've got a, it, you have to pay for it. So it's not a free resource as such, but it's definitely worth it. And as you guys have already kind of probably noticed, I did say when I use online resource, it's mainly for the pathophysiology, anatomy, investigations and symptoms and clinical features. Really, I never really trust any of these videos with their management and not because they've got it wrong it's just that when it comes to management you have to follow the latest guidelines medicine is evolving you know medicine is just moving forward so fast and the management of things are always changing the algorithm of what comes first what second line that's always kind of changing all the time so when it comes to learning management don't go with what the video says because you don't really like those videos are made you know like a couple of years ago i mean some Sometimes they do update it, but the best place to learn management for people in your final year, I would say always use up to date information and you can find those in nice um, um, CKS. That's a really good website. And um, if you haven't checked that out already, I'm talking about people in the UK. Um, but yeah, people outside the UK, you guys can use it too, but it might vary to how things are managed in wherever country you practice medicine. Um, so yeah, definitely do check out NICE CKS. They kind of lay out the up-to-date guideline on how you should manage certain conditions, especially with um, asthma, COPD, you know, like what goes first, what do you start on second? So when it comes to things like that, they are always changing when new things are always coming in. So make sure you stay up-to-date. Um, lastly, also BMJ best practice, another place where I look for management. Um, again, I've put a picture of that up there. Um, those, so those two are the ones I would personally trust when it comes to um, learning management for conditions when I was at medical school. So guys, so those are the resources that I used for throughout my five years of medical school, but there are so many videos out there online resources subscriptions out there and a past test and you know there's loads that i know that my friends have used i know that some of you have got in touch with me saying you guys use that um which is brilliant i mean it's whatever works for you guys i just want you guys to know that just find the one that works best for you and stick to it 
And you guys might have heard, like when you're revising or watching something on YouTube, there's always a lady who comes in and goes, L-E-C-T-U. <laughs> like they always talk about Lecturia. I've heard Lecturia so many times. I personally have never used it, but would love to kind of use it and see if it's worth all the hype. I always see so many adverts about it. So if you guys have used Lecturia before, do comment down below and let me know. Is it worth it? Uh, should I be recommending it to people? Um, so yeah, if you guys use Lecturio, then I would really want to know how it's like, because I've never used it, but I've seen so many adverts about it. But on the comment down below, guys, do put down what you guys have used and what you guys like. And if you check out the couple of ones that I've said, tell, let me know what you feel about them. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What do you like about it? I would love to know. Um, and for those of you who uh, want to ask me more questions about revision, about material, revision materials and resources that I used, do get in touch with me. Either drop your comment down below or follow me on my Instagram. Um, I will try my best to reply to all your messages. I am happy to help, more than happy to help. And I love hearing from you guys and wish you all the best for those of you who are in medical school and those people who are aspiring to uh, do medicine i hope your dreams do get fulfilled and um, good luck with all you guys if you are going through an exam or just revising and thank you all for watching hope this video was useful and if you do like it do press the subscribe button and do share this video as well i'll be posting more regular videos for you guys on a lot of aspects of medicine and other things as well if you're interested um, thank you so much guys for watching and it's your girl keeping it real and until next video see you guys later